We are continuing to look ahead to the Bank of Canada's next interest rate announcement set for later this week. New numbers show the Canadian economy is outperforming what was expected in the first quarter and that's prompted some analysts to predict another rate hike maybe in the cards sooner than anticipated. Stephen Polos is a former Bank of Canada governor and now special advisor at Osler, Hoskin and Harcourt. Hi Mr. Polos, great to have you back. Great to be here. I appreciate you making the time. I want to start off on the new data this week where mm -hmm. GDP numbers are concerned, and in particular that it showed in the first quarter of this year, uh, economic growth outpaced the expectation of both the Bank of Canada and, and private forecasters. Mm -hmm. What do you take from that data? Well, I think mainly what happened there is savings. People drew on their savings in order to boost consumption. Uh, we all, a lot of savings went up during the pandemic. We were aware of that. Will people hold it or will they spend it? We seem to be drawing on it. Our, our more basic fundamentals are, are going down. You know, investment spending now down three quarters in a row. Housing, building of housing uh, down four quarters in a row. So the interest sensitive parts of the economy are weak. And I think consumption is temporarily bumped. Uh, by the savings effect, plus we're also still creating new jobs for new entrants, new entrants into the workforce. And of course, if you're a brand new entrant into the workforce and you get a job right away, you're going to bump your consumption. So I think that uh, it's, it's, it's one of those times when we can't just look at that headline number and feel like, oh, everything's okay. Uh, fundamentally, things are going actually in the direction that we all talked about for the last six or eight months. So, so it's a, that headline number is a bit misleading. Yes, it is. Like many of the headline numbers that we get these days, there's a lot of confusing forces acting today, mm -hmm. uh, which makes many of these indicators less reliable than in the past. So, when you say that the other indicators, if you read beyond that headline mm -hmm. number, indicate sort of a confirmation of what had been anticipated in the last six months or so yes. leading up until that quarter. Does that mean that the economy is not headed in a good direction? Well, uh, I wouldn't want to judge what's good or bad. Uh, the intent is to try to moderate growth in the economy and it's clearly happening. That's, that's my, my take on it. And uh, the household sector, which showed strength in the first quarter, is only feeling the effects of around a third of all the interest rate hikes that we've already put in place. Um, that's according to the Bank of Canada's analysis in the FSR. Uh, that's because it takes several years for many people to renew their mortgage. Right. And uh, it's also probably even less because some people are getting uh, you know, a bit of a relief uh, from the bank when they renew, you know, extending their amortization to, to, for a few years in order to soften the blow of these higher rates. But with $2 trillion in mortgages, uh, the five-year rate is up 3.5%. Uh, so you're talking about taking $70 billion out of the economy, which is a lot. Consumption, you know, this, this is over that five years. And so the consumption effect is going to grow uh, substantially from here as we go ahead. So what does that mean for the pro like in layman's terms that that I, I take that to mean it's going to take a long time yes. for the interest rate hikes to have the kind of effect that that is desired. The full effect. The full effect. That's correct. In, in, in the interim, yes. what are you watching for in order to figure out or try to assess how many more hikes we're in for? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if we can guess that because we're not sure of the forces that we're pushing against. And, uh, you know, most of the inflation we've experienced over the past uh, year and a half has been externally driven inflation. And the big question for everybody is how much of that gets embedded into people's expectations. And then, of course, if it does, then it shows up in labor market statistics like fast labor or wage growth and therefore it reinforces the inflationary pulse. That's the concern that central banks are all watching closely. And some of those signals that we look at routinely, such as jobs reports and the, the wages that come with it, are being distorted by some things that make it much harder to do at this stage. And so what is the impact of that? Well, of all that, just you think of it as more confusion in order to, to know, well, what, what do interest rates need to do in order to get the job done? How much will the household sector react? It's more sensitive for sure today than it was five or 10 years ago. It's far more mortgage debt. So every interest rate move has a bigger impact on the economy, about 50% bigger than say before the financial crisis. So that's pretty significant. Well, we know that much, but what we don't know is how will people adapt to all of this? 
And so it's almost a real-time problem. Uh, it's, it's a bit of almost true data dependence in the ultimate sense of the word. Uh, so it's a movie we have to watch. We don't know the ending yet. Well, well, speaking of the movie, the headline this week, to circle back to where we started, was yeah. growth outpaces expectations, therefore prospects of another hike next week are yeah. higher. Yeah. Do you think that analysis is accurate? Well, just as you summarized it there, uh, no. Uh, I, I think many people, though, sniffed out that it may be the last gasp or it's, you know, the economy it doesn't have a lot of extra momentum behind it because investment is contracting, has been contracting for quite a while, so is housing. So the things that interest rates are intended to slow down are actually happening. Consumption may be the outlier for the reasons we've just described, but I doubt that that's a sustainable thing. Consumption can't drive the economy all by itself. And so uh, we're definitely in for a significant slowdown in those headline numbers. Um, the question is uh, how far and for how long um, very hard to say, given all the things we've just talked about. Just before I let you go then, kind of to round it out, the other sort of um, topic that has been, I mean, we talked a little bit about the slowdown in growth, but the, the word recession, right? In, yeah. in whether or not what the prospects are for Canada entering one. Yeah. Based on that data, do you have a better sense? Well, uh, despite it's, all the question it, marks. it is a question of <laughs> yeah. odds, as you know. So if if the if if the, if we're roughly going to have zero growth this year, then the odds are almost 50-50 that we slip one way or the other. But my sense of it is that we we probably are going to have some negative quarters um, in in the second half of the year, if not even in the very next quarter. Uh, and so uh, that just tells us that things will add up to a, a negative, uh, but the economy is operating at a very high level. So it's not a, not a, a question of falling off a cliff. It's, it's more like being in the zone where growth isn't really happening or slightly negative, maybe, maybe uh, negative enough that people notice and the, the job market cools off a bit more than we've seen. Okay, I have to leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you for your time.